nature, the force that drives humanity. We've been fascinated with nature for centuries, trying to conquer it, dreaming of it, and writing about it. Many great scholars such as Jack London, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Henry David Thoreau have written about the great force behind nature and what it can do. Other people like Chris McCandless tried to live like how these men wrote. Today, we're going to follow the footsteps of Chris and go into the wild like Thoreau and London wrote about. We have a spot picked out to spend the night in an unknown location and we'll be camping overnight to see how it affects us. Will we find our purpose? Stick with us to find out. My name is Samuel Lee, 16, height 5'6". I go to Cleveland High School. Would you consider yourself an outdoorsy person? No. When was the last time you went camping? Uh, when I was like 10, I think. It's been a while. What are you expecting going into this experience? Um, I'm expecting to find my purpose in life, because purpose over goals. <laughs> what do you think is going to be the most difficult part of this experience? Um, probably fighting off all the bugs and spiders that are going to bite me at night. My name is Evan. Um, I'm a junior, and I'm like 5'7". Yeah. Yeah. Would you consider yourself an outdoorsy person? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I like getting outside and, and shooting stuff and driving my Jeep. I like driving my Jeep. When was the last time you went camping? Um, it was like, uh, January. What are you expecting going into this experience? Um, I kind of expect to just, like, make a fire and, like, go out and make a tent and stuff. What do you think is going to be the most difficult part about this experience? Dealing with three other people. My name is Liliana. I'm a junior at SCHS, and that's all I want to say about myself. Mm. Would you consider yourself an outdoorsy person? Um, not outdoorsy, but like I love to be outside, I like hiking and I like camping. But I don't know if I would consider myself someone like an avid, you know, lover of being, of being outdoors. When was the last time you went camping? Um, it was fall break. It was, yeah, in October, in fall break. I did not have the best time. Hmm. Okay. What are you expecting going into this experience? <sighs> not much. But it's not my fault. It's like y'all's fault. Not much. Intrigue. Intrigue. What do you think is going to be the most typical part of this experience? You guys. And now it was time to practice the most important part, building the fire. So. Because he was starving. We are not going to starve. I have hot dogs. Actually, it's because he ate a mushroom. No, he didn't eat a mushroom. The seeds, the mold from the seeds that he ate. As you can see, the no. fire took a little bit longer to make Let's than we thought. Off. But eventually... The glorious moment happened. Get crap on top of it. I told you to get. I did. Okay, get ready for the bug spray. Get ready for the skip. Okay, okay, I'm ready. Yell, yell now. And look at that. We made fire. To think that humans have been trying to achieve this for thousands of years prior, and we're just able to make it nowadays with two pieces of metal, shows the progress of humanity. Meanwhile, we were arguing about how to take on the snakes in the area. Guns or knives? I mean, what else do you combat them with? Maybe your bare hands, if you're a man. Gender equality, I'm a woman. That's not gender equality. That's dysphoria and excuse. I don't know what that means. Look it up. <laughs> now it's time to set up the tent. Down. This was our first uh, task at yeah, yeah, the actual yeah, campsite, down. as the fire had been <laughs> practiced at Evan's house, and it proved to be a daunting one at that. We built a tent without the instruction manual or any prior knowledge of how this tent was made, 
We only used our own wit and knowledge and problem solving capabilities Evan, right to do things, this. And, and okay, so what you do? it turned out alright. Yeah, what do you need me to do? Me. Oh. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, it just comes right here. You get this thing, and you feed it through the red thing, you know? Alright. Voila! Our home for the night. It is so wrong! Yeah. It is so wrong! Well, actually, you know, now that I think about it... <laughs> All good things are wild and free. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. I'm desperate. Actually, I'm desperate. Now it was time for us to make the actual fire. Since our previous fire had been at Evan's house, we needed to make a real one at the campsite. Although we had to go search for some propane, as Sam is displaying here, we did not find any, but it didn't matter because we got the fire working ahead of time and we had our light and heat for the rest of the night. Well, I should go now. In my opinion, this was the best part of the night. We had brought some hot dogs for our uh, dinner, and so after we had made our fire, we were just cooking the hot dogs, drinking some sodas, uh, having conversations, and having a good time. We weren't focused on the arguments we had had earlier, the blame we had placed on each other, the difficulty with the tent, the difficulty with the fire. We were just trying to make the best of our situation. Who knew that you could get so much from being put in the woods with three of your friends? Had we been enlightened and found some sort of new life or new purpose for us to have? No. But you know, have we you know learned what? a lot from this experience of teamwork, bonding, and trying to overcome really? nature? Like Most definitely. <laughs> then, after a long night of hard work, it was time for our heroes to rest. difficult part of this experience would you say? Uh, I think the most difficult part was trying to work as a team because we didn't really have a plan going into this mm -hmm. so we were just trying to do everything on the fly sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't. Yeah. Um, difficult part was uh, definitely working together and you know just getting it started for, like at the beginning and getting the ball rolling. I would say really learning how to um, communicate, like really work together as a team. Like typically we know how to do that when we collaborate with ideas on projects and stuff, but really putting these things into action, um, I feel like we didn't know each other well enough to realize our strengths and weaknesses. So I feel like going into this, we should have been more prepared. Um, just figuring out like what we we're gonna do next um, and like figuring out like how are we gonna do it. What do you wish you could have done differently? Uh, I wish we would have uh, made a plan beforehand of what we were going to do, what we were going to bring and stuff, instead of just kind of a day of, so we could have done a lot more things, uh, a lot of stuff like that. Also, I wish we could have had a cooler spot instead of old Tony's backyard. Uh, what I could have done differently? Um, I could have helped more, honestly. Kind of just stood around like some people, like, while some people, like, you know, actually built the fire and stuff. Mm -hmm. Would probably be just being a little bit less organized, I guess. Just like kind of going with the flow. What would you suggest to someone trying this in the future? Uh, get a group of people you like. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't like my group, but it's definitely much easier going out there with friends than going out there with like people you may not like as much. So make sure it's a group of people you really like and you get along with and you can work well with. Um, I would suggest uh, go there with like a manual or something, have like some experience, at least camping, and you know, uh, just yeah, have a, have a plan I guess. Um, 
I would go with people I know better. Um, people you really know how to talk to, communicate with, because that way it's easier to do things like start a fire or, you know, get supplies or know, like, who's going to miss what, so then you can, you know, really be prepared for what's coming. I would probably say that again, just um, be a little bit less organized. Um, don't try to get everything down or else you'll end up, like, overthinking about, like, how you're going to do it and stuff like that. What was the most satisfying part? Uh, I think the most satisfying part was when we were just like, you know, chilling around the fire. We had our hot dogs cooked. The fire was going good. We were just like living the good life. Well, satisfying was probably waking up and then getting to sleep in and not go to the first period because I was L tired. Satisfying part? Can I say leaving? Uh, the most satisfying part was probably getting the fire, like making fire. I made it three times. What did you learn? Uh, I learned the power of teamwork. I learned that if you try and do something all by yourself without help from the other people, it's going to take a whole lot longer mm -hmm. than if everyone works together and collaborates and cooperates and does something good. Um, I learned that uh, it takes a team. And, uh, you know, working together, all that good stuff, mm -hmm. teamwork. I mean, I guess I would say uh, always know where you're going before you jump into a situation. It takes a lot more skill than I thought it would to like, be able to do it all and everything. Um, but it definitely helps having more people there um, and having a little bit more supplies. Yeah. So there you have it. We spent a night in the woods. Did it massively change the rest of our lives? No. Did we learn something at least? Yes. While we didn't find our purpose in the woods, we were taught a lot by nature. We learned how to use our own talents, how to problem solve, and how to be a part of a team. The experience we had led to us growing closer as friends and peers, and that is more valuable than anything else we could have done.